Hello everyone, a year has passed since the release of the 10th version of Food for Inventor. All this time our team has been working hard in order to develop new functionality as well as to improve existing features. I'm Igor Borodovsky and I'm honored to present what's new do we have in 10th version of our song. So without further ado, let's find out. I divided new features into workflow stages and of course let's start from a design. We have good news for kitchen designers, either shop fitters, because now Woodwork for Inventor have a tools to rotate multiple textures at once. During the operation material type filter can be applied. This simplifies selection in case if you are working with different materials, such as laminated panels or panels made of solid wood. Then when the components were selected, you can set the grain direction in two ways by a reference edge or according to the screen orientation, which is useful in case if you have large assembly. We also reward the oversize mechanism. Now you can pick the material and assign an oversize for all the parts made of it. The other option is to select material type like laminated board for instance, and then all the parts made of the same material type will be collected automatically. Then an oversize can be applied along selected direction or for all four directions symmetrically. This improvement streamlines the work with materials on large assemblies a lot. Some of the designs might use slant faces, for instance, to use lamella joints that are invisible from outside, to ensure that the edge will be not damaged during the cutout of a rectangular workpiece, the oversize should be applied. You can define an automated oversize for slant edges in Woodward for Inventor options. Then this oversize will be applied automatically when you set the materials. Most likely, you already notice that the grain direction indicator has been changed. New indicator allows to clearly see where is the main face, left, right, front and back of the part and allows you to use this information in the BM generation. Also it indicates the current grade direction and where the new one will be. In the ninth version of woodwork, in case when the part had no right angle, the grain was set along X coordinate. In the tenth version of woodwork, we fit the part in the smallest range box and set the grain direction along its longest edge. This leads to more precise BM results. We have some improvements in the iBoxes as well. When you do changes in the reference object for iBox, they are managed by Woodwork for Inventor Refresh Common. In 9th version, when you change the file attributes using Copy Design or Design Assistant, it was not possible to track what is the renamed base component of an iBox, and therefore change of its parameter to match design changes was not possible. Woodwork 10 tracks the base component by special marker in the file itself, therefore changes in the file name or other properties of the file does not affect the functionality of iBox. The publishing of an iBox is now easier than before, since the base component is located automatically. What is left to do is just indicate what creative parameter names did you come up with. Now just a few words about the hardware. Now you can utilize hardware with custom parameters in your designs, directly from the Hardware Placement menu. So, as you normally do with a vanilla inventor, you can define the parameters, just apply the component placement, and that's it. So once we have finished the work with the model, we can produce the BOM, utilizing the data we put in the previous steps in the model. And let's talk about patent surfaces. So, Painted surfaces previously were shown as separate lines in the BOM. That was good in case if you have large surfaces colored in different colors. However, if you have single part with many small faces, like for instance part with uh, contour milling, it was quite hard to collect them all to set uh, the materials and see how much paint do we need to use on this part. Now it's easy to do since we calculate all those small pieces like one uh, line in the BOM. So that's actually what I'm speaking about. You can see the 9th version on the left and the 10th version on the right. Now the composition of a multi-layer board is shown in the BOM in the main part list as you do is with uh, regular parts. In case if you are importing uh, woodwork BOM data into the ERP system, you may need to import each workpiece as a separate line. New woodwork for inventor templates allows you to do this and many more other customizations. We already spoken about the angle cut at edges, so we can transfer cutting information into the BOM as well. So as you can see here we have some slant edges on the workpiece. And now if you want to see this information in the BOM, you can easily do this utilizing some new keywords. And then when we run the BOM export, as you can see, now we have a cutting angle 
for both edges. Ninth version of Fugudor Fragmentor PM data was exported to Microsoft Excel using COM objects. This was not a fast process, especially in large assemblies, so in Woodwork 10 we implemented a new engine that allows you to directly generate XLS file without actually sending a lot of instructions to Microsoft Excel. This significantly reduces the time for this operation, and as you can see, uh, for this exact unit, we are getting about 19 times faster data export. 10 version of Udor Fragmentor allows you to use custom I parts with materials assigned. So we already spoke about the hardware, the custom parameters, but you can utilize the custom parameter in order to place some predefined parts. They appear in the BM as a regular parts. This is especially useful for case if you are using different kind of profiles of a custom length. So as you can see, when the part have been placed, you can assign a material, like in this case some kind of profile, and then it will be shown in the BIM as well. So this can be treated like a regular part. And just a few words about the drawings. Woodwork for Inventor places a lot of useful information in the drawing, such as grain direction, uh, hull table, dimensions, etc. Therefore, if you did the changes in the model, Drawing update might be time consuming. So now you can choose an option to just uh, select the sheets you want to update and run update procedure only for selected pages of your document. Also, you can update the content of its selected folder in case if you have legacy data and if, if you want to add woodwork for elementary attributes such as a drilling table uh, on your drawing. So you can select the folder and then run an update. As you can see now, the file which was in the folder has been updated. We have some new beta feature here. In case if you have uh, a need to generate PDF for existing drawings, it might be challenging, especially if you have a lot of them. We developed an utility that allows you to generate PDF of the drawing located in a selected folder. It's enough to just select the folder and all the rest will be done automatically. So as you can see, here we have a lot of PDFs generated in a few seconds. Sometimes it's quite useful to have matching position number in the BM as well as in the drawings. Now we have a keyword that allows you to do this. So this simplifies the navigation between the drawing and the BM. Now let's take a look what new improvement we have in the CNC. And let's start from the post processors. We have been added a shop button Cobos post processors. Also we are constantly working on improvement on existing post processors. If you don't see your post processor in this list, as you remember, custom post processors can be done on your mind. Now in Material Editor, you can define not only regular oversizes, but sizing oversize as well. You can set the default sizing for selected material, and it will be applied automatically when you set the material to the plot. For sure, you can override the default value during your design procedure, and, of course, this information will be included in the BM. But what is more interesting is the fact that you can apply the sizing operations on the CNC level. At this moment, this can be done only manually. So, as you can see here, we are choosing the milling operation for making this calibration of our size uh, treatment. And that's it. This is the trajectory how this excessive material will be removed. This animation probably speaks for itself. Now you can create complex operation and check how the tooling happens without physical prototypes. Also, you can, sim you can save the simulation body and check if the part actually looks as it should be. And that's it. So without wasting a lot of time, you have an option to analyze what you are getting after a CNC. Now let's speak about the question what to do in case if you want to make a copy of your existing assemblies. And of course, most of you already know this tool, assembly copper, so let's find out what new we have here. As you may see in the picture on the top, in the ninth version, browser notes was named in the hierarchical order. This is not uh, the best way in some cases, especially if you want to find out uh, to whom part, uh, to which part this drawing belongs. So, 10th version analyzes relations between the files, and if it found that the part have a drawing, 
its name will be the same as the name of the part. The same rule applies to assembly and its presentation part. So if your part have a suppressed components, this can be done for various purposes. When you do your copying, now the copied file will also have this drawing, this view representation. In other words, suppressed components, rem name, uh, suppressed components rem remain the same suppressed components in the copied file. In other words, suppressed components remain suppressed in the copied file. There is many improvements not visible at the first glance. Our team works hard to make Woodward Fun Inventor bug-free, stable, and quick as possible. We believe that many small improvements in every bit of software gives tangible results. And finally, a few words about the compatibility. As you know, Autodesk Inventor 2020 has been released recently. It's a great software with a lot of new features. Unfortunately, there was an error in the Inventor API which Autodesk representative promised to fix with the first service pack. So we should wait for the service pack for Autodesk 2020 to make it work with Woodwork for Inventor version 10. We support Autodesk Inventor 2019 and 18 versions as well. And all that brings us to the end. I'd like to thank you very much for your time and attention today, and we will be glad to see you next time. Good luck.